Bad things happen at work. From crazy co-workers to terrible bosses, unfortunately, bad behavior is very common on the job. Usually, you can just ignore it and carry on with your work. But when that bad behavior gets directed at you, or looks to be illegal, documenting it properly can be very important. My name is Brannigan Robertson, and I'm an employment lawyer. This video is all about when an employee should document things at work. I'll explain the best ways to do it, and why keeping notes could mean the difference between losing your lawsuit and winning millions. Just about every case that I've ever handled included four types of evidence. Notes, emails, documents, and some type of text or instant message. This video is about how to properly take notes and document down on paper alarming things that are said or the questionable actions that are taken by other people at work. This is the first video in a four-part series. The next video is specifically about how to properly save key emails. The video after that will be about saving company documents. And the fourth and final video will be about how to save critical text messages and other instant type messages. Needless to say, I think the concepts in these videos are essential for every employee to understand. Sadly, I've had too many clients who didn't do anything like my recommendations here, and as a result, critical evidence to prove their case was unavailable. Hopefully, you never have to take any kind of legal action. But if you do, you want to be prepared. The goal of this series is to help you preserve and remember facts and documents that you'll need to win your case. After all, facts, emails, documents, and messages need to get admitted in court or your lawyer won't be able to prove anything. So if you want to get notified when I release the next three videos, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. But before we get into the nitty gritty, I need to say two quick things. Number one, I have a license to practice law in California, but I'm making this video for everyone in America. This video will help anyone understand the basics. However, this video is not legal advice for your situation. The rules of evidence are different from state to state and sometimes court to court. More importantly, I don't know you or anything about your situation. You should never take what is said on a YouTube video as legal advice. If you need legal advice, you need to pick up the phone and call a lawyer in your state. Number two, if you are in California, please don't call me if you're looking for you know, answers to basic legal questions. Unfortunately, I don't have time to help with those kinds of inquiries. The free consultation process at my office is primarily for California employees who got fired and they believe they have a case for wrongful termination, discrimination, or something of that severity. The consultation process is not for giving free legal advice. All right, enough of that. Let's get into it. Let's first talk big picture. What are we trying to accomplish here? My objective with this video is to give you methods of recording down on paper important facts that you'll be able to use down the road in a lawsuit to do two things. Number one, help you remember critical facts, dates, events, and witnesses that you'll need to prove your case. And more importantly, number two, help you create written notes that by themselves might be admitted in court to help prove your story. I'm also making this video to solve a couple of big problems that lawyers like me have in proving employment cases. Problem number one, authenticity. Juries absolutely hate it when it looks like the employee is trying to engineer themselves a lawsuit. In other words, if it looks like the employee is trying to set up the company to get sued, that employee is gonna lose. That makes you look like the aggressor and not the victim. I personally hate it when I receive a bunch of notes from somebody and the things that they wrote down make me believe 
that they're doing this simply because they want money. Problem number two, any notes that you take will probably be considered hearsay under your state's uh, rules of evidence. I'm not going to explain what hearsay is, as that is well beyond the scope of this video. However, generally speaking, hearsay statements are not admissible in court, and thus your lawyer won't be able to use those notes to help prove your case. But if those same statements are recorded the correct way, they might fall within an exception to the hearsay rule, and depending on the judge and your circumstances, your lawyer might be able to get them admitted in order to prove your case. Problem number three, we have people who either give us too much or too little. Sometimes people call us and they, they might have a great case, but they didn't take any notes, they can't remember basic dates, they don't remember the names of witnesses, and they don't have any friends at work who can corroborate their story. On the other hand, some people send us 80 pages of nonsense notes with no grammar, no punctuation. Those notes have nothing to do with their underlying case. They're just ranting on and on, and everything is out of chronological order. Obviously, you don't want to be either one of these people. This video will help you set up a system to take good notes, relevant notes, and will keep everything in chronological order. Your notes will look authentic because they will be authentic, and if done right, you might avoid the hearsay rule, and you'll give your lawyer the ammunition that he or she needs to pursue your case to its full potential. Normal people generally don't write down things that happen at work. Notes like this by their very nature are pretty awkward, right? So looking from the outside in, if you write down the little stuff, the jury is going to just think that you're a whiner or you're trying to set the company up for a lawsuit. So before we look at how or what to write down, the first question that we must honestly answer is when should you be taking notes at all? This requires some discernment, so please pay attention. While there's no perfect formula or perfect answer, my general recommendation is that you should take notes when you think that something unlawful is happening to you. More specifically though, and it's probably more helpful, my advice in this video is to only take notes when the following four conditions have been met. Number one, you are experiencing a significant issue at work. Number two, whatever is happening to you is significantly impacting your ability to do your job. Number three, you suspect that the conduct at issue is unlawful, or it stems from an unlawful act, or is evidence of a part uh, of a pattern of unlawful behavior. And number four, you have already tried to remedy the situation by going to HR, your boss, or some other appropriate authority at the company. The purpose of going to HR first, before you start documenting stuff on your own, is that your notes will be far more authentic if you first try to remedy this situation using the standard methods of workplace problem resolution. Your notes will automatically have more credibility if you start documenting after the company ignored you, or failed to take the appropriate action, or after they started retaliating against you. Remember, every word you write or say might end up in front of a jury of people who don't know you and they don't care about you. So you want your actions to seem completely reasonable to them. Now, I recently published a video titled, Complain to Human Resources the Right Way. Before going to HR, I strongly recommend that you watch that video. Now, if you're paying attention, and if you follow my rubric here, you shouldn't have pages and pages of notes. Significant issues, by their very nature, are rare. So you shouldn't be coming to a lawyer with 40 pages of documentation. It should just be a few entries to a few pages. That's it. Next, let's talk about what you should write down in your notes. To keep it simple, you should follow the five W's. Who, what, when, where, and witnesses. Let's go through each of those quickly. Who. You need to write down the name of the person who is saying or doing the alarming things at work. 
It also helps if you write down their job title and where they are in relation to you within the company. For example, let's say your boss's boss is harassing you. You should write down his name, his title, and that he is your superior at the company. What? Let's talk about what you should can write down in your notes. Let's continue with our harassment example. Let's say your boss's boss calls you in for a meeting. He locks the door, asks you out on a date, comments on your physique and your clothing and unnecessarily touches your shoulders, and he just gives you the total creeps. As soon as you can afterwards, you should write down everything that happened in that meeting. This includes everything that he said, everything that you said, and everything that occurred. You are recording down on paper what happened. All right, let's talk about when. You need to record the date and time the events occurred. The benefits of sending yourself an email, which we'll talk more about in a bit, is that emails inherently have a date and time stamp. However, if you're sending yourself an email a few hours or a few days after the event, as best you can, you need to write down exactly when the bad thing happened. You could say, right after lunch on Wednesday, March 4th, Rick summoned me to an unexpected meeting in his office. Okay, easy. Where? Where did the events happen? Were you at your desk, on the line, on a phone, on a Zoom call? If you record where you were and where other people were, it might provide important context to explain the theory of your case. And lastly, witnesses. Who else was there? Who else witnessed the conduct or statements that you experienced? Witnesses, even bad or adverse witnesses, are very important in these cases. Write down their name, their job title, and, if you have it, their contact information. If you don't have it, go find it and write it down. Now, before we go on to more stuff, there's two big things that we need to talk about. Because these five W's are awesome and very helpful. But there's two things that are really important that you either include or omit, or omit from your notes. Number one. It helps a lot if you understand the legal basics of what is happening to you. Now, if you understand the basics of the area of law that is at issue, you might avoid destroying your case. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Let's say you made a complaint to Human Resources and OSHA about an unsafe piece of machinery at your job. In retaliation, your boss starts cutting your hours, writing you up, and giving other people favorable shifts. Let's say that in your notes, you repeatedly write down that your boss is doing this to you because he's jealous of your credentials or your skills or your seniority or whatever. Why is this important? Well, it's perfectly legal for an employer to cut your hours, write you up, and give other people the better shifts because your boss is jealous of you. However, it is unlawful for your boss to retaliate against you because you made a safety complaint. Do you see the difference? And if you write down statements like that that hurt your legal claims, such as, my boss is retaliating against me because he's jealous, you might lose your case for unlawful retaliation. I've turned down a lot of cases because people wrote statements like this in their notes or their complaints to HR. So what should you do? Obviously, you don't need to become a legal expert or a lawyer to avoid making this mistake. But you can get a basic education and learn what is important by watching my YouTube videos. Now, I've made over probably 50 videos uh, on just about every major subject of employment law. I'll put a link to the most important subject areas in the description below. And if you watch and internalize what I say, you'll have more than enough knowledge to avoid making this what can be a very big mistake. And this conveniently leads me into point number two. Less may be more when it comes to notes. Beyond the five W's, you don't need to add anything else. In fact, if you add too much of your opinion or unnecessary facts or irrelevant details, then you dilute the importance of your notes. Also, I don't understand why I have to say this, but I do. For the love of Pete, 
Don't say or write down that you're going to sue them. Don't write that you're searching for a lawyer. Don't write all the bunch of curse words. Don't try to psychoanalyze or diagnose your boss's behavior. Don't put yourself on a pedestal. Acting like you're holier than thou just shows how much you're not. Notes like this are terrible in front of a jury, so don't write this stuff, okay? Please, don't write that stuff. Remember, less may be more. Next, let's talk about how your notes will be used in your lawsuit. The notes that you're taking may be used in two ways. Number one, they'll be used by your lawyer in court. The goal with these notes is to prove your case to the jury, and everyone, including the defense lawyers, will see your notes. The second way they'll be used is not in court, but they'll be used to help you remember what happened so that you can explain your story to your attorney or you can explain your story in a deposition. But before we dig into this over here, let me first make clear that the federal and state rules of civil procedure, evidence, and the rules of professional responsibility, which govern discovery, evidence, and attorney-client privilege respectively, are extraordinarily complicated subjects that are way beyond the scope of this video. But with all of this in mind, if you want your notes to be useful, I strongly recommend that you follow the guidelines that I'm about to go over carefully. Now I've got three strategies to share with you, but before I detail them, let me quickly describe two big mistakes that people in this process make. First, please don't film or record people with your phone without their knowledge at work. I made an entire video about this a few years ago, and so if you want to know why you shouldn't be recording people at work, and when it's okay, please go watch that video. Second, I, uh, I don't recommend that you store any notes of the nature of what we're talking about here today on a company-issued or controlled computer, phone, tablet, software, or web service. People get fired every single day for making this mistake, and I don't want you to be one of them. Okay, strategy number one, which is simply called emailing yourself. <laughs> There's only two simple steps to this strategy. Number one, set up a free email account like Gmail, Yahoo, or any other free email service. The earlier you set this up in your employment, the better. Now you don't want to use your work email account for this kind of note taking because the company probably has software that will you know, alert them if you email yourself. And I guarantee if you file a lawsuit against the company down the road, their overpaid defense lawyers are going to go through your work email with a fine tooth comb to try to find anything that they can twist and say that you did wrong. And you don't want to use your everyday personal email account because you don't want to inadvertently open the door to discovery on your personal emails. Trust me, you don't want to have some defense lawyer sleuthing through your personal stuff, right? Okay, step two, whenever you uh, see something or hear something that's significant that happens at work and you feel like you need to record uh, what happened as soon as possible, log into your new email account, your independent email account, and write yourself an email with your notes. Your notes should be focused on the five W's that we talked about earlier. The beauty of sending yourself an email is that by its very nature, your notes will automatically be put in chronological order and each email will have a date and timestamp. That's good. Now, most of the things that you write down as notes will be hearsay. It's just gonna happen. But if your notes, if you do it immediately after the event happens, or as it's happening, your notes might be considered by your judge to be one of the following things. A contemporaneous declaration, a recorded recollection, a spontaneous declaration, a present sense impression, or a regularly conducted activity. These are fancy legal terms that you don't need to know. All you need to know is that they are exceptions to the federal and state hearsay rules. And depending on the judge you get uh, and the facts and circumstances of your case, he or she might allow your notes to be presented to the jury. And that would be good. Now, strategy number one is good, but not 
perfect. One of my closest friends who does a lot more trial work than I do thinks that if you do this, you've got about a 50-50 shot at getting hearsay statements like this admitted. It just depends on the judge you get and the rules of evidence in your state. But I also want you to realize that there's a much bigger picture to this strategy. Even if your notes are hearsay and they'll ultimately be excluded from trial, it's still worth doing this. Why? Because most cases never go to trial. Most cases settle. And your notes, if the facts are in your favor, will probably exert a significant amount of pressure on the company to settle. When your lawyer is discussing settlement with the defense lawyers, neither knows for certain whether or not a judge will include or exclude certain evidence at trial. So don't be thinking too much about hearsay. That's for your lawyer to deal with. Your job is to simply and accurately record the five W's as best you can so that no critical fact, witness, or statement gets forgotten. Okay, strategy number two, email human resources, right? As opposed to writing emails to yourself, which is kind of weird, right? You might think, maybe it would be better to send my notes to HR, right? After all, they're there to help people with their work issues, right? Right? No. If you're doing this right, you've already gone to HR earlier or some other authority at work and they did not help you. While there are certain times when you should absolutely submit a written co complaint or document to human resources documenting the things like what we're talking about today, it's also probably a, just a fast track to your termination. HR is not your friend. And I strongly encourage you to watch my two-part video series called why HR sucks, and how to complain to HR properly. That series will give you very clear instructions as to when you should go to HR and when you shouldn't. Strategy number three, email a good guy at work. This strategy is the same as strategy one in principle, right? Except as opposed to emailing yourself, you're emailing a trusted person at the company. You should use your work email for this strategy. Ideally, the person uh, should be someone you trust completely is all, and he or she is also a witness to the bad behavior. The idea here is that if the trusted person is a witness, you can ask him or her in your email if everything you've written is accurate. If he or she says anything but no, it would corroborate your side of the story and lock it down far better than if you just emailed yourself. While this strategy increases the likelihood that your notes will be admitted at trial, it is not guaranteed. It also comes with some significant risk. It dramatically increases the risk that your notes will be discovered or disclosed to your employer prematurely. And it also puts your trusted friend in a very difficult spot. The employer might get mad at them down the road for not bringing these issues up. They might fire your trusted friend. So evaluate your own risk tolerance and choose your strategy accordingly. Now, what if you don't want some of your notes to be public? Well, if you're fortunate enough to be able to hire a lawyer while you're still employed, a lot of times when you are writing notes, you might be thinking to yourself, hey, I should probably consult with my lawyer about this. It's not a bad thought. For the most part, communications with your lawyer are privileged, which is a fancy legal word that means they are protected. And aside from extraordinary circumstances, no one will be allowed access to them but you and your lawyer. So, as opposed to emailing yourself, you should email your notes to your attorney. And they will be protected behind the shield of attorney-client privilege. Okay, that was a long video, but it was packed full of information, so I hope you got something out of it. Now, if you found this video to be valuable, uh, I mean, it takes me a lot of time and energy to make these videos. So if you thought it was helpful, please hit the like button down below. If you have questions about anything that I said in this video, 
ask a comment in the comment section. I do answer a lot of the comments that people leave on my videos. If you know somebody who would need this video, send it to them, okay? Also, stay tuned for the next video. That one's all about how to properly save your work emails. Usually emails are the most important kind of documentary evidence that we have in employment cases. So if you thought this video was helpful, that one is even better. Finally, if you're in California and you believe you were wrongfully terminated, harassed, or discriminated against, feel free to call my office for a free consultation. If you're outside of California, please call a lawyer in your state. That's all I have for you. Have a great day.